Hey everybody, this is Scott Allen Miller. Today on Sam IT, I'm going to discuss the problem that your company doesn't know what you know, or they have no idea how good you are at what you do. This is a common problem. I hear this from IT people all the time. It comes across as their bosses or their company owners or the CEO are idiots and don't listen to them. And that's possible, right? It, sometimes you have a boss who just won't listen to you and doesn't know what they're doing. That's possible. But let's discuss a more realistic problem. And that is, one, there's a trend that people in IT don't know what they're doing. Now, don't take this the wrong way. The average person in any field doesn't really know what they're doing. Of course, unskilled labor, you can make some accommodations that maybe the average person knows what they're doing. But when you get into technical fields, there's actually a real problem that the average is just kind of making do and everyone else just can't tell because they don't know either. So there's a real thing in IT that the average person that works in IT is doing completely crazy things, whether it's simply not doing their job or doing their job incredibly poorly or passing their job off to someone else or doing things that are semi-reasonable but not great. The problem that comes in here is from this aspect that all of the people who hire IT are generally conditioned because of this average to assume that most people are like that. It's not that they don't think anyone knows what they're doing, they just feel that they can't tell and there's no reason to believe that you know what you're doing. Why would you be different than anyone else? This brings up the second point is that if they knew how to evaluate how well you were doing, they wouldn't need you, they could do the IT themselves. This is an interesting thing about IT because it's a business aspect, not a technical one. There's essentially no way to really determine if someone is doing a great job unless the person who's doing the determination is an even better and more broadly skilled IT person than the IT person making the decision, coupled with a whole lot of effort and possibly more time and effort put into the same equations than the person who made the decision in the first place. Bottom line, it's incredibly hard to tell when someone's doing a great job. It's pretty easy to tell when someone's doing a terrible job. Of course, you can figure that out generally in a few minutes, but if you have someone who may be doing a great job or just randomly is doing a great job, there may be no way to tell. It's, at best, really hard to tell the difference between someone who very carefully evaluated lots of options and came up with a great solution versus someone who just randomly guessed and picked one. Worst case scenario, you have the house of cards scenario, which I'll try to link in the notes and you can look it up on uh, mangalossi.it, why IT builds a house of cards. You have a scenario where things look fine, but IT has either intentionally or accidentally built a system that is completely crazy, whether it's fragile or overly expensive or prone to simply die at the wrong time or doesn't do the things that the company needed but not in a way that they can really easily tell or doesn't meet their needs anywhere near as well as other solutions would have, but since those solutions aren't known or weren't evaluated or brought up to the business, they have no idea that what they're getting is terrible. For example, you would never know that a Ferrari is an expensive car if you've never seen cars before. That's how the business is. Most businesses have absolutely no idea what good IT would look like for them. Because again, if they did, they would just make those decisions. They wouldn't need IT to do it. You put these things together and you have some really simple explanations for why the business one, probably doesn't trust IT. Even IT people that they personally trust or think are trying really hard or think are better than average, they still may not trust them to really grasp the entire picture and make great decisions. Maybe they don't think you have enough resources to do so. Whatever, they're conditioned to think this way. And two, they're really not probably themselves in a position to make good determinations even if they wanted to believe you, they're not sure who to believe. They get a lot of conflicting information and don't understand it. They don't have the skills in 99% of cases to evaluate those things meaningfully. Now, of course, if they were competent business people, they would understand when they have vendors and salespeople trying to take advantage of them versus IT staff that represents them trying to protect them, but they still may not know who's qualified and skilled versus who's purely just trying to do things that looks good for them or matches their skill sets. A very common problem is that someone will promote something that they're good at or know versus the right thing for the business. This is 
incredibly common. It probably happens far more than 80% of the time. And there's really very little way for a business to evaluate the difference between someone who actually evaluated product X and decided it was the best thing for the company versus all of the products versus simply having had experience or exposure to product X or talked to that salesperson and decided to promote it without evaluating other things or evaluating other things poorly. There's just no way to tell. We have the additional problem that uh, very commonly IT people will not talk to the rest of the world in business terms. This is kind of a social thing and kind of a career problem that a lot of IT people think of themselves as bench workers. They don't like saying that they're bench workers. They take great pride in being IT and they work for the IT department or people assume so, but they work like bench workers in that they think what they do is tech, not business, and they just press buttons and they think that there is a lot of like best practice and things that they can do without evaluating every little thing in the context of their business that makes them acting like bench instead of IT. In IT, everything comes down to the context of the business. That's what makes it IT. Otherwise, you could be automated, right? Everything would just be a pre-written best practice like we talk about in why there's no best and why IT is not a checkbox, right? Bench may be a checkbox, but IT is not. All that taken together it actually becomes pretty easy to understand why even the rare, really good managers, owners, CEOs, and so forth have no idea if you, as an IT professional, have any idea how to make good decisions and make uh, the right decisions for their business. They don't know if you're trying to, and they don't know if you could, let alone if you are. That's just how it is. What can we do about it? That's the big question. And this is something that I think we as IT can combat. Now, first of all, it's important to understand. We often say our managers are crazy. People don't listen. They, they don't care about their business. And there are a lot of cases where that's true. I don't want to downplay the fact that this happens and that the average owner or CEO may not be very competent. That's unfortunately the case. But it's not the case anywhere near as often as we believe it is or as the stories we we hear tell us. In reality, there's a huge gap between what IT does and what business does, and this shouldn't exist, and it's something that we in IT have a chance to overcome by in taking the way that we communicate with the business and turning it from tech into business. If you're presenting a solution, let's say that you've chosen Windows over Linux for your new operating system to deploy on your new set of servers. This decision could be presented to the business as simply as, I chose Windows. Okay, and the business may trust you or feel that they have to do what you say or feel it's not worth having the discussion. They have no idea if what you've picked makes sense. They don't know why you picked it. You've not told them. Instead, make a presentation, maybe just one on paper, maybe just an email. But do the math. Make it a financial decision. Show them why Windows does things for their business that other things do not. List the, in the, the reasonable alternatives. Create a business case for having chosen Windows. Why is it worth paying more upfront instead of getting something free? What does it offer? What are the extra features? Is it because you have skill sets and knowledge in this? List them. Make those a business case instead of a personal reason, right? Create explanations, talk about risk and money, everything in business terms and present it to the business. Make it clear that you're thinking in the terms of a business person which is what IT should always be. Make it clear you're not a bench worker who's just doing what they know or just doing the thing they think is a best practice, which isn't. Whatever that would be in bench isn't. So there's this manner of presenting what we do and changing the way that we think. And it's important because we may, through these processes, realize that we're making bad decisions or simply become better at making our decisions because we're articulating them better. We may be making great decisions without knowing why because we're not really, you know, writing it down and communicating it to anyone. You could do this within the IT department first or to someone closer to your department, maybe in operations, and run through your reasoning and see if it makes sense to someone else who's not directly involved with the decision. Decision. Does this make sense for the business? And if by doing so, if you can prove that it makes sense, and think about all the reasons that the business people, the non-technical business people, may have reasons to want other things or to want the thing that you want, right? Defend those or make them make sense or show why they don't make sense, 
right? Think about the things that matter to them, which could be risk, it could be uh, large case usage in the market or whatever. Incorporate all of that into your thinking, into your presentations, into your logic. And when you present that, you can show to the business that you're thinking in a way that they had no idea you were taking into consideration. And by doing so, at least you're giving them the opportunity to evaluate your decision-making process and your uh, contextual obligations to the company. Are you actually doing what they want you to do in IT? Now, of course, they may be incompetent, and there's nothing we can do about that. At that point, if you want a good job, it's time to move on. But there's so many times where it's actually IT's quote-unquote quote, fault for simply not giving the business any way to know, and the business is probably conditioned to not ask anymore because they did that 20 years ago and they're burned out on it. Or they may not know to ask, but they'll still know if you're doing a good job when you present that. So I hope that this is helpful. Uh, lots of questions, I hope, below. Remember to like and subscribe, share this with your friends. Take it to your business, figure out how you can change the way you act at your business, and maybe change from being perceived as someone who isn't making business decisions into someone who is perceived as being part of the business team and is thinking and making decisions in a superior way. If you want to sponsor us here on Sam IT, you can do so on Patreon.